So you need four pieces of paper. Doesn't matter if you get four different colors or if you get four of the same color. I just need you to get four pieces of paper. Thanks. Four pieces of paper. shot. Okay, does everybody have four pieces of paper? <coughs> yes? Okay. So, you see how mine have my how I have mine spaced out some? One, two, three, four. Like the width of my finger, so okay. Now watch. I'm going to fold this over like this so that this is also the same amount of space. And then I'm going to fold it right there. Everybody see that? Then I'm going to take the stapler carefully. I'm going to staple. Right across the top of it. Like that. Yes? Here you go. Take the stapler. Thank you. Anybody have any questions about how to do this? If so, please ask me. Just sit quietly and, and get it folded. Sit quietly, please. Just at the top. You can do two staples. You can do three. Pretty much any more than four is silly. You want 13 staples? All right. Okay. Yeah, just fold it over, but you have to give yourself enough room. You don't want to make these the space too wide or you're not going to have enough room on this top flap right here. Okay? But you don't want to make them too narrow cuz then you won't have enough room on these individual flaps. Okay? Good. Good. Bye. Uh, did you get a packet yesterday? I'll call you out today. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to go and get started on making this. The staple will make its way around, and you can staple yours when it gets to you. Okay? Yes? All right. So today we're going to be talking about... Exponents. The other day when we were talking about different exponent rules and stuff, you guys pretended like you had never seen an exponent before and like you didn't know any exponent rules. So I decided today we better go back and make sure we have all those. Make sure we remember all the, the rules of exponents. Shh. Okay. So... Now, does everybody see how there's a flap right here? It's, it's not the very top one, but it's the next one. Does everybody see that? I'm not going to open this top one. Okay, I'm going to use this space right here, and I'm going to write product of powers. Because that's the name of the rule. It's the product of powers. It breaks, so you have to be careful. If you can't fix it, bring it back to me and I'll fix it. Okay? Product of powers. Now the rule looks like this. A to the M times A to the N equals A time to the what power? What do you think? When you multiply like bases, what do you do with the exponents? You add them. That's exactly right. So M plus N.
Okay, so far? Okay. Now I'm going to open up this flap. And I have all this space right here to show you some examples. Like this. X squared times X to the third equals what? X to the fifth. That's exactly right. When we're multiplying like bases, we add our exponents. Okay? Now, I don't mean to freak any of you out, but I'm afraid I'm about to. Why do you think that I would be afraid I would be about to freak you out? Because they're fractions, right? Okay. How is this any different? It's not. If I'm multiplying like bases, what do I do with the exponents? Add them. How do you add three halves and four halves? X to the seven halves. That's it. That's all we want to do. Okay? X to the three halves times X to the four halves. When I'm multiplying like bases, I add my exponent. Three halves plus four halves. It already has a like base. So I add my numerator and get 7, and I keep my denominator and have 2. Okay with that? Then we would have to find a common denominator. That's exactly right. Okay? If they don't have like bases or like uh, denominators already, we would have to find a common denominator. Okay? All right, the next tab is called Power of Powers. <clears throat> And this rule says, if I have a to the m raised to the n power, what do I do with those exponents? You multiply them. That's exactly right. a to the m times n. <coughs> okay? Okay with this rule? Let's do some examples then. Sorry? Got it? Okay. So x squared to the third power. x squared to the third power is going to be what? x to the sixth. It's a power being raised to a power, and we multiply those two numbers. What if it's x to the one half power? raised to the third. You multiply, right? How do we multiply one half and three? Straight across the numerator, straight across the denominator, right? X to the three halves power. Any questions about that? You okay so far? Okay. Next tab. Power of a product. Power of a product. So if I have a, b raised to the n power, a, b raised to the n power, what do you think that's going to equal? a to the n power, b to the n power. Good. Okay, so far? Okay, I'm going to fold this one back so I have some room to write some examples. So AB squared is the same as what? A squared, B squared. It's exactly right. Are we allowed to mix any of these rules together? So what about x squared, y to the third power, but that whole thing is being raised to the fourth power? Isn't that mixing rules together? Isn't it? Because I've got two, I've got a quotient, I mean, excuse me, a, a product right here of these two, but this whole thing is being raised to a power, isn't it? So what do I do with each individual 
power inside. I don't have to do that. Good guess, though. I multiply them, right? X to the eighth, Y to the twelfth. Okay, someone else's turn. Deal? Thank you. Now, did that seem relatively simple? Yes or no? Yes? Okay. So, I have to tell you, though, this one, for some reason, is way harder for people than that one is. People get this one wrong more often than they get this one wrong. Why do you think that is? Because of the two. That's exactly right. What am I raising to a power? Isn't it everything inside the parentheses? So even the two? Even the two. Doesn't the two have an exponent? It's a one, isn't it? Doesn't this x have an exponent? It's a one, isn't it? So don't I have to use my rule that's called power of powers and multiply all of the exponents in combination with a product of a power? I do, don't I? So I have 2 to the third power. What is 2 to the third power? 2 times 2 times 2. 8. What do I have with x? x to the third power. And what about y? y to the 15th. Very good. So what about this? a, b to the two-thirds power. Do I follow any different rules if my exponent's a fraction or not? Oh, I don't? But it's fractions. I hate fractions. Or I strongly dislike fractions, right? Oh, no, you hate them? Okay. <laughs> do, I, do I follow any different rules, though? No. Oh, so what's the answer to this one? a to the two-thirds, b to the two-thirds. So what about this? 16, a to the fifth, b, and that whole thing is being raised to the one-half power. Is it every single thing inside the parentheses being raised to the one-half power? Okay, so here's one of our new concepts for today. Okay, 16 to the one-half power. Have you ever heard of one-half power before? I'm going to disagree with you. You said no. I'm going to disagree with you. Okay, tell me what 16 to the one-half power is. It's 4, isn't it? Because how, how would I get 4 out of 16? Square root. So, does that seem logical that 16 to the 1 half power would be the same as square root of 16? We'll talk about that more in the, couple, in the next couple days. Okay, it's, it's okay if you don't understand it right now. Mostly we're worried about exponent powers right now. Okay, exponent rules. But I'm here to tell you, anything to the 1 half power is the same thing as taking the square root of it. Okay, so I get 4, because I know 16 to the 1 half power is 4. What happens to the A? What do I do with those exponents? Multiply a to the 5 halves power and b to the 1 half power. Right. Good, good. How are you feeling about this so far? Oh, good. Okay, excellent. I'll keep going. What do you think the next one's going to be? Look at the last ones. What do you think the next one's going to be? Starts with a Q. Quotient, quotient of powers. Okay, so my general rule is a to the m divided by a to the n. <clears throat> so I have the same base, and I am dividing those those bases. So what would I do with the exponents if I'm dividing like bases? Very good. Subtract. Here, does that, does that even make sense? Because here when I was multiplying like bases, what did I do with the exponents? I added. So does it make sense that if I'm dividing like bases, I would subtract the exponents? Good. 
fold up that tab so I can give you some examples. X to the fifth divided by X to the third. Yeah, X squared, right? X squared. Five minus three is two. I mean, I could prove this to you the long, long way. One, two, three, four, five. Isn't that the same as X to the fifth? One, two, three. Isn't that the same as X to the third? What's anything divided by itself? One. X divided by X, one. X divided by X, one. X divided by X, one. What's left? X, two, two of them, right, being multiplied in that X squared. It's one times X squared, which is just X squared, right? Do you want to do this every time, or do you want to remember that if we divide like bases, we subtract the exponents? Oh, me, me too, me too, okay? So what about this one? X to the third divided by X to the eighth. Okay, so we're going to get to negative exponents in a second. It's a tab later on, but we do not like them. They're bad. We don't like them. We don't ever want negative exponents if we can help it. Okay, so here, here we started in the numerator, right? And we subtract the denominator because that's where the bigger of the two numbers was. What if I started in the denominator? What if, what if I said 8 minus 3? Where would I leave the answer? Where did I leave the answer here? Started in the numerator? Answer's in the numerator, isn't it? What if I started in the denominator? Couldn't I leave it in the denominator? 1 over what? X to the fifth. Now, I do agree with you that that is X to the negative fifth because 3 minus 8 is X to the negative fifth. I get that. We don't want negative exponents if we can help it. And guess what? We can help it. <laughs> okay, sir. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Later, not right now, but later. Okay, we'll, we'll get to those. What about X to the 7 thirds over X to the 2 thirds? What do you think I would get? Mm -hmm. X to the 5 thirds. No different rules just because there's fractions? Is that the third time I've asked that question? Or there's so am I, am, am I making my point? Right. I know you know the answer because I've already asked it three times. I'm just trying to make a point. Okay. Any questions on quotient of powers? Okay, let's go to the next one then. Power of a quotient. Power of a quotient says, if I already have things being divided like A and B, and I raise that to the M power, what do you think I should get? A to the M over, yep, B to the M. Well, isn't that a whole lot like this one right here? A, B to the N power, so anything inside the parentheses is being raised to the N power. Isn't that what's happening here? Everything inside the parentheses is being raised to the N power. We have to have a different rule for it, though, because, well, this is a product. This is a quotient. Yes? Okay, so let's do some examples. X over Y to the third power. X over Y to the third power equals what? X to the third over Y to the third. Very good. What about A to the sixth over B squared? And that whole fraction, the whole quotient, is being raised to the fourth power. Ooh, a combination of rules. A to the twenty-fourth over B to the eighth. Very, very good. Now, how come I'm expecting you to kind of know some of these already? You've already done them, haven't you? But it's been a while, 
And I'm going back over them because when we were talking about exponents the other day, some of you seemed really lost. So this is one of those things that I thought was worth taking some time and reviewing our exponent rules before we go on. Okay? What about this one? 3x over z to the fourth, all squared. Be careful. Cuidado. 9x squared. Not just 3x squared, it's everything being squared, right? Even the 3. 9x squared over z to the 8th. Good. Are there going to be any different rules if I use fractions? <laughs> Can you hear the impatience in their voice? Seriously, Miss Kingston, you've already asked us that 84 times. X over Y to the 5 sevenths power. X to the 5 sevenths over Y to the 5 sevenths. Good. <coughs> Any questions? Okay. Next to last tab. Negative exponents. Negative exponents. What did we say a second ago about negative exponents? They're bad. We don't like them. Okay? Now, I'm not saying in every single situation we want to get rid of negative exponents, but there's a whole lot of situations where we don't want negative exponents. Okay, so let's start here. X to the negative third. Oh, uh, yes, I forgot it. Thank you. Let me write the rule. A to the negative N equals 1 over A to the N. A to the negative N equals 1 over A to the N. Thank you. Okay. A to the or excuse me, x to the negative third. So one over x to the third, right? Now, sometimes I like to tell you stories to help you remember stuff, and sometimes they're really good stories, and sometimes they're really, really stupid. And what's funny is that most of the time you'll remember the really, really stupid ones before you remember the regular ones. Okay? You see this negative three right here? It's in the numerator, isn't it? It is so sad. I mean, it's negative, right? It's so sad. Where does it want to be? It wants to be in the denominator. When you move it to the de denominator, look how happy it becomes. It is not sad anymore. Isn't that stupid? I know it's stupid. I told you from the beginning it was. Okay? Does it work both ways? Where is this X? It's in the denominator. Look how sad it is. Where does it want to be? In the numerator. When you move it to the numerator, it is so happy. It is so, so happy now. Okay. Now, can we can we mess with negative exponents when there's other stuff around? Is this two? Is this two? Is this so unhappy? No, it's just mean. We don't mess with him. When are they unhappy? When the exponents are negative, not just the numbers. So we're going to leave the 2 where it was in the numerator. Is the x happy? Yeah, we don't want to mess with it. Starting in the numerator, leave it in the numerator. Is the y so sad? So it's only the y that's sad, right? It's only the y that we want to move to the denominator. And when we move it to the denominator, it is so happy.
3xy squared, all being raised to the negative fourth power. We have a couple choices here about where to start. Because again, this is a combination of several rules, isn't it? Okay, so we know every single one of this, these things, these items in the parentheses need to be raised to the negative fourth power, don't we? But we also know the whole thing is being raised to the negative fourth power. So do you want to, do you want to put that negative four into each term first, or do you want to get rid of the negative first? Number one, does it matter? No. We can do either one first. There's not a, an order of how you have to do this. Okay? So you want to get rid of the negative first? Is that what I heard you say? Oh, put it into everything first? Okay. So what do I have? Three to the negative fourth power. X to the negative fourth power. Y to the negative eighth power. What's wrong with the three? It is so sad. Where does it want to be? Denominator. When I move it to the denominator, I just get three to the fourth, right? What about the x? It has a negative exponent. It's in the numerator. Where does it want to be? In the denominator, x to the fourth. What about the y? It also wants to be in the denominator, y to the eighth. Now, there's one more thing we can do here. Do you know three to the fourth power? And if you don't know it off the top of your head, is that something you can easily find using your calculator? Mm -hmm. 81. 81 x to the fourth, y to the eighth. That's completely simplified. Okay. If we would have gotten rid of the negative first, it would have been one over 3x squared, excuse me, 3xy squared all being raised to the fourth. And then when we moved it inside to each one of the individual terms, we would have gotten exactly the same thing. Okay? What about x to the negative one half power? One over x to the one half power. Good. What about 1 over x to the negative 3 fourths power? x to the 3 fourths power. Okay? Now, the last tab does not have, I'm sorry? The, the last page does not have a, um, like a name or a tab at the bottom. There's just some things I want you to write in this section. Okay? I want you to know a to the m, excuse me, yeah, a to the m over n power. This is stuff you may not know yet, but it's stuff that's coming up, and I want to go ahead and get it written down in our exponent foldable. The number, the top number in a fraction is going to be the power and the bottom number of the fraction is going to be the root. Again, that may not be something you understand yet, but we can get it written down in here. Okay? What about this? X to the first power. What does that equal? Anything to the first power is just itself, right? What about Y to the zero power? What does that equal? Anything to the zero power is one. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay? Now, I need to draw something for you. You know how my art skills are, so just be patient with me. Okay? <coughs> Two to the first power. If I draw an area model for you, what should that be? What's two to the first power? Isn't that two? What about two squared? This has to be a square, doesn't it? Because it's actually called squared. It's two times two, isn't that four? Well, it's two to the third power. 
that's cubed. Well, I can't draw a cube not in an area model. We're not doing that. But isn't it like this? Isn't it this number times 2? So wouldn't that be 8? Yes? So if I go from 3 to 2, what's happening to the number of blocks? It was 8, now it's 4. So half of it, right? If I go from 2 squared to 2 to the first power, how many blocks? It was 2, excuse me, it was 4, now it's 2. So that is half, isn't it? So what about 2 to the 0? If I'm following the pattern, I went from 8 to 4 to 2. Uh, haven't I gone half and half? Shouldn't I go half again? 1. That's why anything to the 0 power is 1. Especially, that's why 2 to the 0 power is 1. Okay? So, following that logic, we're going to go here. I know we don't like negative exponents. We're going to leave it for now because we need to talk about this. Okay. Aren't I going half and half? Ms. Kingston? Yes, ma'am. Can you send Katie McDonald to the office? She is leaving. Yes, I will. Katie, you need to go to the office. Okay. Half, half, half. What should this be? Half. Guys, think about it. What did we just talk about with negative exponents? Isn't this too so sad? in the numerator, so where does it want to go? Guys, isn't that a half then? Oh my goodness. Then what's 2 to the negative half power, excuse me, negative 2 power? Isn't that a fourth? Because this is 1, and this is 2, and this is 4, and this is 8. Right? <laughs> Does that help with area model? See and why things are? Okay. So the last thing I want you to do is turn this over and write your name on it. Don't write my name. This is my name. You write your name on it. We're going to refer back to this a lot in the next couple weeks and even beyond that, okay? Any questions about this? You have some, uh, some problems on the sideboard to do based on this foldable. Use this foldable as you need to. Um, hopefully you can finish them before the bell. Mark, is that go.